So we're going to move on and talk about the specific species of Staphylococcus from now on. And we'll start with the most common one you'll probably come across, and that's Staphylococcus aureus. Again, it shares all those characteristics. It's gram-positive, it's cocci, they're in clusters, and they have a thick cell wall. But there's a number of different things you need to know about Staphylococcus aureus. First start, as we mentioned in the previous video, it's coagulase positive. So that's an important thing to remember about Staphylococcus aureus. It also has a number of specific virulence factors. We're going to touch upon three independently here, and then we just, when we discuss the diseases it causes, we'll touch upon a few more uh, during those discussions. But the three I want you to think about initially when you think about Staphylococcus aureus are the protein in its capsule, so protein A, uh, the tychoic acids that are associated with the cell wall and capsule as well, and their ability to fight those penicillin uh, antibiotics using a beta-lactamase enzyme. So let's talk about those three um, right now. So protein A is a protein found in the cell wall of Staphylococcus aureus, and it acts to inhibit uh, antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity, which is a really big word for saying that normally in human beings, our antibodies bind to an antigen that comes into our body and forms a complex. Um, these antibodies typically are IgG, and the FC portion of that antibody is then activated, and natural killer cells act on this area, recognizing that there's an antigen-antibody complex in our body, and lies this target cell that's been kind of coated with these antibodies. Now that's the normal process that takes place. However, Staphylococcus aureus has developed a very kind of smart way of getting around this antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity, and that's by using a protein called protein A to kind of confuse that FC portion of IgG so that the natural killer cells who come along and perform that cell-mediated cytotoxicity um, can't actually be activated to do so by the antibodies coating the antigen. So that's one important way, a very important way, a Staphylococcus aureus, uh, um, acid fights or other proteins that very, very allow the actual bacteria to bind more easily to mucosal membranes. So this is important when we cover later a number of infections that involve mucosal membranes um, by uh, Staphylococcus aureus itself. Staphylococcus aureus over time has developed a number of ways to make itself uh, less susceptible and more resistant uh, to the actual activity antibiotics. Um, penicillins, for example, consist of what's called a beta-lactam ring. And in response to that structure, what these bacteria have done is they've formed an enzyme that actually cuts or cleaves the ring at certain points, rendering the actual antibiotic ineffective, pretty much disarming it from actually killing the bacteria. So beta-lactamases or penicillinases are one final actual pathogen, or sorry, one final pathway of virulence that I want you to know about when you recall this video. In summary, really the three main ways um, that Staphylococcus aureus can evade infection and become more virulent is using protein A to avoid antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity, and also the tycoic acids and the beta-lactamase enzymes.